Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss this example. So here we have function f, which is defined from r2 to, to r and the important information is function f is continuous. So with the help of function f, one more function is defined that is g of xy. So it is defined in this way, g of xy is equal to f of x plus y, x minus y. So we are, here we have to prove that g is also continuous on r2. Getting So let me mention here, uh, to prove that g is continuous on r2. So here we have to prove the function g is continuous on r2. That means it is continuous at each and every point of r2. So what will I do? I'm going to take any arbitrary point of r2. Let us call it as x0, y0. And we will simply prove that g is continuous at that arbitrary point x0, y0. So let us do. So let x0, y0, let me write here x0, y0 belongs to R2 be any arbitrary point. Okay, arbitrary point. So then to prove that, then what we have to prove? We have to prove that G is continuous at x0, y0. So we are, here we have to prove g is continuous at x0, y0. So let me draw the diagram so the picture will be clear to us. So such a R2 plane we have, getting? And here we have R. So that means domain is R2 and codomain is R. So function g is defined in this way, right? Here we have to prove g is continuous at each and every point of R2. What we have done, we have selected any arbitrary point. We have called it as x0 y0. So now our target is to prove the function g is continuous at this point x0 y0. See there are several methods, there are several definitions of continuous function. See we have epsilon delta definition, right? We have family with one result if g which is open subset of codomain, if its inverse image, f inverse g is open subset of domain, then also we say the function f is continuous. We have a same definition for closed set also. If you have closed set in codomain, its inverse image is closed in domain, then also we say the function is continuous. One more definition we have that is a sequential definition. That means if you have any convergent sequence, let us call it as x and y. Suppose it, it converges to x0, y0, then its image sequence, that means f of x and y. So that image sequence converges to f of x0, y0. Then also we say, here we have a function g. So we should write here g, right? g of x and y converges to g of x0, y0. Then also we say the function g is continuous at x0, y0. See, this definition I'm going to use to solve this example, right? So for that, we need to have one sequence x and y which converges, ready? which converges to x0, y0. See here we have a sequence in R, R, no? so we have a sequence like this. So this is g of x and y. Instead of writing this one, we should write in this way. It converges to g of x0, y0. This thing we have to prove. Let us take one sequence. Late x n, y n. b a sequence be a sequence in r2d okay so where d is euclidean distance we have considered and r with a usual distance r2 with a euclidean distance and r with a usual distance so we have a sequence in r2d such that such that that sequence x n y n converges to x naught y naught see what is our target our target is to prove g of x and y converges to g of x not y not. This thing we have to prove. Okay, so let us start to prove. Let me remove this part. So we will have some more space to write. So here we have started with one convergent sequence. So all of us are familiar with a definition of convergent sequence. For given epsilon greater than zero, there exists a natural number, okay, such that and so and so. But see, here we start with a epsilon. So here also I will take one arbitrary epsilon. So let epsilon greater than zero be given. So I'm starting with one epsilon. So we have this thing, so we can write by definition of convergent sequence, there exist and belongs to set of natural number such that, 
such that what will I get by definition of convergent sequence? D of D means Euclidean distance. Since we have a sequence in R two D, x n y n, comma, x not y not, right? This is less than epsilon for all n greater than or equal to capital N. So D is a Euclidean distance. We are familiar with its definition. So by definition, what can we write? Definition says square root of first component minus first component square plus second component minus second component square less than epsilon for all n greater than or equal to capital N. So to remove that square root, I will take square of both sides. So we will have x n minus x not square plus y n minus y not square less than epsilon. This condition I should carry everywhere. That is n greater than or equal to capital N. See, we are adding squares. That means we are adding non-negative numbers, and their sum is less than epsilon. That means each of them is less than epsilon. So therefore, we can write x n minus x not square less than epsilon and y n minus y not square that is also less than epsilon with this condition. Let us take. Uh, sorry, I should write here. Uh, see, we we took square. No, so here I should write square. Okay, so we took square of both sides. So that's why square root is removed here, and we will get square there. Okay, so I continued this one. Uh, see, I will take positive square root of both sides. What will I get? Mod x n minus x not less than epsilon by taking positive square root and mod y n minus y not less than epsilon for all n greater than or equal to capital N. But see, this is definition of convergent sequence. We have a mod, so we get a convergent sequence in R with a usual distance since we are using mod here. So therefore, we can say this is actually definition of convergent sequence. So we can say x n converges to x not. In R D U, okay, with usual distance, and from this one, this is also definition of convergent sequence. So we can write here y n converges to y not in again R D U. See if x n converges to x not, y n converges to y not. So we are familiar with algebra of convergent sequences. If you have two convergent sequences, x n y n converges to x not y not, then their sum. x n plus y n will converge to x not plus y not similarly their difference x n minus y n will converge to x not minus y not so let me write here so therefore what we get that their sum x n plus y n will converge to x not plus y not and difference x n minus y n will converge to x not minus y not in r d u so all these are sequences in R with a usual distance. So yes, so we got this one. But see, there is no more space to write. Make a screenshot of it first. Then I will go further. Okay. So we got very important thing that is x n plus y n converges to this one. X n minus y n converges to x not minus y not. So basically, these are two sequences in R. These are two convergent sequences in R. But with the help of them, we can form a sequence in R two. Getting. So let us see. Uh, what can we do here? So therefore, x n plus y n comma x n minus y n. Getting so I have found one sequence in R two. It's a sequence in R two D. D means Euclidean matrix. Getting so x n. See this is the sequence we have x n plus y n. This is another sequence x n minus y n. So with the help of them, I have found one sequence in R two, and the important thing is that sequence x n plus y n and x n minus y n will converge to. Can you guess? It will converge to x not plus y not comma x not minus y not. Getting since the first component converges to this one and the second component converges to this one so we get this convergent sequence getting so yes we got a convergent sequence in r2 d with d is a euclidean matrix right see but the important information we haven't used yet so that is f is continuous map this is a given thing so let me write here but we have but we have f is Continuous on 
R2. So the information is f is continuous on uh, map that means f is continuous on its domain which is R2. So therefore f is continuous at this point also x0 plus y0 x0 minus y0. See this is one element of R2. If we say the function is continuous on R2 that means it, it is continuous at each and every point of R2. So it is one of the points of R2. So we can say f is continuous at this point also. And what we have and and we have a sequence xn plus yn xn minus yn it converges to x0 plus y0 and x0 minus y0 getting so see f is continuous at this point and we get a sequence which converges to same point so by definition of continuous function we can say so therefore we can say that f of xn plus yn comma xn minus yn will converge to f of x0 plus y0 and x0 minus y0. See, we have proved already this result in our previous videos. So that's why I'm simply using it. If function is continuous at any particular point, and if you have any convergent sequence which converges to same point, then we get f of that sequence is equal to f of that point. So we got this one. But did you notice this is same as the definition of G, right? This is the same as the definition of G. So we can write, so this is nothing but G of, this is nothing but G of X and Y. So if you use the definition of this definition of G here, you will get same thing. Converges to, this is nothing but what? G of X naught Y naught. By definition of F, uh, G, we can write it. So G of X and Y converges to G of X naught Y naught. So we initially we started with the uh, assumption that sequence x and y converges to x0, y0 and we proved g of x and y converges to g of x0, y0. So therefore we can say g function g is continuous at point x0, y0. So let me mention that thing, uh, just make a screenshot of it. So therefore let us conclude, therefore, therefore, see we started with what? We started with a sequence x and y which converges to x0 y0 and finally we got implies g of xn y n converges to g of x0 y0 so we have already proved that result there is if and if condition so we can also consider it as a definition of continuous function so therefore we can say g is continuous at x0 y0 but see x0 y0 is any arbitrary point of r2 so let me mention but x0 comma y0 belongs to r2 is any arbitrary point so it means function g is continuous at each and every point of r2 so therefore we can declare therefore g is continuous on r2 so in this way we proved the function g which is defined in this way g is defined with the help of function f and if it's continuous then definitely g is also continuous on r2 so the solution is over make a screenshot of it then we will stop thank you see you